Triumph is probably the only British motorcycle manufacturer that most bikers are familiar with today. Although certain nameplates have been restored in quite distinct new forms, the majority of its compatriot two-wheel specialists are now gone. So, what went wrong with the British motorbike business, and why did it go wrong? Let's find out in today's video. In an age when vehicles were commonly available, the motorbike or motorcycle, with or without a sidecar, provided practical solo and even family mobility. Britain has been a pioneer in the field. By 1913, 100,000 motorcycles had been registered in the United Kingdom. Manufacturers were obliged to produce stronger and more dependable machinery as a result of World War I. Britain manufactured a lot of motorcycles throughout the 1920s, with 1929 being the greatest year. In 1929, 147,000 motorcycles were produced. The two world wars created a large demand for British motorcycles. Allied troops received around 30,000 of Triumph's belt-driven Model H, often considered as the first modern motorcycle during World War I, while British armed services received 126,000 of BSA's M20 models between 1937 and 1950. Royal Enfield also made military bikes, including one that could be parachute dropped from planes. Over the next several decades, Britain produced a number of iconic motorcycles, including the Norton Commando and my favorite, the Triumph Bonneville. The latter went on to become the most popular British motorcycle of all time, breaking several speed records in the process. The Mini marked the beginning of the end of volume British motorcycle sales, when they stopped being a utilitarian instrument and became more of a hobby item. Similar to how the Ford Model T wiped out hundreds of motorcycle manufacturers in the United States. It was a little later in England, but it was the Mini. However, even before the Mini, foreign competition was cutting into British motorbike sales, and it all occurred really quickly. By 1955, NSU, a German corporation, had risen to the top of the global rankings. Honda, which had just been created a decade before, became the world's largest motorbike manufacturer in 1959. During the 1950s, the Japanese Big Four motorcycle manufacturers were completed by the similarly fast-growing Suzuki, Kawasaki, and Yamaha, which continue to this day. While the United Kingdom continued to produce some fun-to-ride motorcycles, many of them were based on pre-World War II designs. The Triumph Trident, which was one of the first superbikes, together with the Honda CB750, had a three-cylinder engine that was derived from the 1937 Triumph Speed Twin. The Japanese were able to swiftly develop modern designs that were more in line with the motorcycle's new image as a leisure vehicle. Their motorcycles were more fashionable and dependable than their competitors. As a result, the latter's market share plummeted. While Germany's BMW made a comeback in the 1970s with its fully rebuilt Slash 5 series, and American's Harley Davidson clung to life because of tariff restrictions and nationalism fueled consumer devotion, British motorcycle manufacturers, on the other hand, withered and died during the 1960s and 1970s. BSA Triumph was taken over by Norton Villiers after a government organized bailout. Nonetheless, the latter was dissolved in 1978. In 2008, a British investor restored the Norton name, but unfortunately, the firm went bankrupt in early 2020. And finally, on April 17, 2020, it was announced that India's TVS Motor Company has completed an all-cash acquisition of Norton Motorcycles. Triumph has been the lone significant survivor in the British motorcycle industry. Triumph Motorcycles, founded in 1983 by construction mogul John Blur as a brand new firm, has grown to become the largest UK-owned motorcycle manufacturer. Prior to the COVID-19 collapse, Triumph was selling roughly 65,000 of its coveted high-end bikes per year. Unfortunately, there's no evidence of any major new British bike companies emerging anytime soon. 
while Royal Enfield is a major company with around 850,000 motorcycles produced in 2018, some of which are still based on original British designs, has been owned and operated by Indians for decades now. And well, fortunately, as I said a while ago, you can add BSA to the list of storied British brands being brought back from the dead, thanks to Anand Mahindra. Yes, that Mahindra, the chairman of India's massive Mahindra group. And well, I hope to see British bikes go back to their former glory. So guys, thank you for watching today's video. If you like my videos, make sure to press the like button. Make sure to press the subscribe button if you want to follow me on my journey of loving motorcycles. And of course, make sure to press the notification bell. Don't press none. Goodbye!